Hi, I'm Mike from the School of Self-Reliance. Today we're going to talk about my belt kit and my, uh, my ultimate survival kit. Uh, there's been a lot of comments in the comment section where people say, Mike, you're, you know, you got too much stuff on your belt or you're going to have too much stuff on your belt. And I can see why it would seem that way. Uh, maybe everybody's gotten the wrong impression. Um, if I'm going out just walking in the back, you know, my back 40 kind of thing, I'm not taking that whole belt kit. I'm not taking the ultimate survival kit. I'm not taking, uh, you know, my food kit or anything like that because I'm just in the back 40. I'm, I just don't need it. Um, you know, my belt kit would have all this on it except this. If I'm just going in the back 40, this pouch would be gone. That's a food pouch. So if I'm just going out in the backyard, I'm not going to carry that. I'll carry everything else so I can carry something to drink. I can do my other stuff. I've got a knife, whatnot, but I won't carry the food kit. If I'm going someplace a little bit more serious, I'll bring the food kit. Now, this, this is going to go on the belt kit, but it's not going to go on the belt kit with everything else, okay? It's not going to go on the belt kit with everything else. If, if everybody's got the idea that I was saying that I'm going to throw this on in addition to all of this, then the answer to that is no, I'm not. Let me kind of explain. I do everything on my stuff in a modular fashion because I kind of follow the military mantra of that, everything being modular. You know, a lot of times if I'm going out somewhere, I'll take this butt pack and I'll stuff it full of stuff. I can put uh, my Stasha shelter in here, you know, my Pro Force bivy. Um, I can also put in there a poncho or a casualty blanket, the other stuff that I'm going to bring. Um, I'll bring my food kit. I'll bring everything else that you see on my belt, but I'll also do this. I'll add to it a set of Alice suspenders, which I'll show you in just a minute, so that the weight is taken off of the belt. And then I'll set it up the way the military intended, uh, so that this stuff is load-bearing, you know, not just on my hips. And if I'm going to use this, we'll show you in just a second. Okay, this is how my belt kit's laid out so that you can just more clearly see it. I've got this. I'm using a, a GI M16 ammo pouch, and I'm putting some possibles in there. I carry like a tactical flashlight in there. I carry like a... Uh, a set of East German eating utensils. I don't like eating with my fingers. I like to have things. I'm, I'm kind of a civilized human being, even in a barbaric circumstance. Um, and I've been doing this since I was a kid. Um, I also carry bullion and stuff like that in there. Uh, one of my micro survival kits that you've seen in my other videos, which is a match kit with fishing line, hooks, uh, matches. Uh, it has flies in there, stuff like that for fishing and for making fire. So I've got that. I carry a magnesium bar in there with a ferrocerium rod so that I've got added fire kit material. I carry a super, super bright tactical flashlight, you know, 500 lumen. And, you know, I carry in the back of it, I carry a small piece of a uh, saw blade, a uh, hacksaw blade. It's a pain in the ass to dig it out, so that's why I'm not going to show you. Um, but then I also stuff when I go out when I go out in the woods. I also stuff some other stuff. I stuff like a bandana in there to keep it all quiet. Uh, but it's an old ripped up bandana, so that I can use that as fire material as well if I need to. I can make char cloth out of it. And over here, I carry a multiplier. And this one's a uh, Leatherman Super Tool 300. And I chose the 300 because it has changeable blades. And there's a couple other things I think every, uh, every multiplier should have. Um, and I mean every multiplier should have them. Uh, you should have in it a file. There should always be a file on your multiplier. That one has a pretty nice double-sided file. And so I've got that, and it has another thing. It has a serrated blade and a fine edge. And I think you should have the serrated blade but I also think there's one other thing you should have, which is a non-negotiable, a saw. Small saw for doing fine work. And this is actually a really good saw. And I like it that all the pieces lock into place. Um, so it's a lock back with everything. Um, 
but a file and a saw have to be on your multiplier in order for it to be an effective woods tool. And then I've got my food kit, canteen, cup, and cover. Uh, you know, the military canteen cup. So I've always got a metal container. One of the hardest things to make in nature is a container, and one of the harder things still is a pot to boil stuff in. I mean, that's one of the, the just absolute, you know, you're not going to do it. I mean, uh, you're going to have to build some technology to build some technology to make boiling, you know, things to boil in. Um, you know, the best you can do is hollow something out and drop hot rocks in it or, you know, that kind of thing in order to disinfect. So I always carry that. Now, if I'm going out in the deep, dark woods, I will remove this food pouch. I will remove part of this. I will put in its place this butt pack. And I will transfer the food items into this butt pack along with a shelter. And I will add to this rig my Alice suspenders so that this stuff, I'm, all this extra weight is, is dispersed over my shoulders as well as my waist. You see what I'm saying? And let the wind pass for a second. All right, so now I've got my Alice pack or my Alice butt pack or fanny pack as they're called today, but you know, that's, that's a little too new age for me. It's a butt pack. Um, I don't like the fanny pack thing. It's too politically correct. It's uh, too a feminine. Um, now in here, I've got my food and I've got my shelter material in here. And now through the use of these clips, we're going to attach it right here onto the belt. Some people really don't like Alice equipment. I'm not in that camp. I actually still use it. I still like it. Um, do I own modern gear? Of course I do. You know, is some stuff made better today? Of course it is. Is a bunch of it. Yeah. Does it mean that this gear has seen its day? Eh, I don't think so. And one of the benefits of this butt pack is that this thing is made so that it has these D-rings. Some, some Alice packs don't have D-rings. They have uh, little, uh, right in here, they'll have like little eyelets where these Alice suspenders clip in. And that's so that it can pick up the load from the top and suspend it more evenly over your shoulders. And that's a really good idea, especially when you're carrying loads like this. Um, It'll make it easier on you, even though this doesn't appear to be a super heavy load. There's a lot more to it than you think, especially if you're carrying it all day. I'm going to get this fixed up and come right back. What I'm doing is I'm sizing these so that the load is carried at the right height. Now, the old Alice equipment can be a little bit of a pain when it comes to the sizing. And it takes a minute to get it where it's right for you. But it's worth the minute that it takes. So, you know, don't look at it and go, oh, this is terrible gear, man. It took so long. It's so complicated. Well, you know, everything isn't easy and everything isn't just, you know, tailor-made. So you kind of got to tailor it to yourself to make everything work out. And once you do, I have found that it's it's really not uncomfortable gear to use. So here we go. Now I've got my knife, I've got a canteen, I've got my possibles pouch, I've got my butt pack, and inside there I've got a shelter and I've got food. And this is pretty easy to carry. My hands are free, everything like that. I can move out and you know do what I have to do and I've got complete mobility. And it's not cumbersome to carry and it's well everything is uh you know the weight is well distributed throughout my body as far as my shoulders and my waist so you know this is how i do that now i'm going to show you what i would do with this the ultimate survival kit all right with this one one of the ways that you can use this pretty obvious there it is you've slung it and you can wear 
a lighter belt kit without the suspenders, you can wear the lighter belt kit with it, with it over your shoulder, just hanging on your back, almost like a backpack. And if you've got it cinched up, it's not really, you know, bumping around on you. Now, ideally, you're going to put this on a battle belt, which is not an Alice belt but a battle belt. It's going to have molly pieces on it and so on, but you can use it on an Alice belt. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, now it's on the belt. We strap it on. And there we go. We've got our stuff. Remember, this whole kit is eight pounds. Okay, it's there's not a lot there. We take some from this pouch. All we have to do is transplant two pieces. Our eating utensils and our flashlight. And we pop them inside of that one. And there we go. Now, one of the things that I would do use the Alice suspenders with this if I was going a long distance you know I would go ahead and use the Alice suspenders now if you don't have those and you just want to use you know a shoulder strap you can do that too this could be slung over your shoulder expanded and hooked into the d-ring to give extra support to the bag okay now we've got this all Situate it with the Alice gear. Throw it on, buckle it up. Let the suspenders out just a little bit. Go to the back. Do the same thing. Let it fall down around your waist. And there we go. So now you're carrying it, you've transferred your other gear, now you're using this instead of that small pouch, and this becomes virtually your whole kit. Virtually. And if you are going somewhere where you would have already been carrying a backpack, then I don't really think that you need to carry this. I think you need to carry a lot of that gear in your backpack and revert back to the original belt kit that I showed you along with the backpack. You know, because now you are going to have a little issue, not a huge one, but a small issue with the backpack not wanting to go all the way down, which as bad as it would seem, it really isn't all that bad. If you readjust all of your load-bearing stuff, all your straps to tighten them up on the backpack, the Alice suspenders are already taking a great deal of the load. But the stuff that you should have, and, and this isn't actually bouncing around all that much, it's not doing that much. So we've got, we've actually got a place where the suspenders from the backpack, or your straps, you tighten them up so that it brings the backpack a little further up. The bottom of it does ride on here, and that's okay. It's still distributing the weight the exact same way. And it didn't interfere with my backpack. Now, again, if I were carrying a backpack, this is something that you're taking if I'm going out hunting. Okay, I'm going up to the UP. Uh, you know, I'm going somewhere bow hunting in Tamagami, something like that. In Tamagami, I'd take more. But if I'm going out and I know I'm only going to be out, of, you know, over just through the day or, or something like that, this is what I'm taking. I'm going to take this kind of stuff along with my hunting gear because this is easy. This takes, this has no space and weight to it. You know, it's all back here. It's not going to interfere with my movements. It's convenient to carry. And it's light. And even though it is a little bit bulky, a little, it's in a place you're never going to notice that bulk. 
even out hunting, even out deer hunting or whatever kind of hunting you're doing, and it's only eight pounds. We got eight pounds here, just a little over. So that's nothing. You can carry that. There's a shelter in there. There's food in there. There's your survival items. There's a medical kit. There's a spare knife. Uh, there's your uh, an extra metal container. Uh, like I said, a full fire kit, a full medical kit, everything in there. And it does it for, un, you know, for just a little over eight pounds. I mean, how can you beat that? Eight pounds and a couple ounces. Um, and so if you do run into trouble, that's your emergency fallback right there. That's how you survive the night. You know, let's say your, your cousin Jethro shoots himself and you at the same time, you know, and you're wrapping up your leg, trying not to bleed to death, and you got to, you know, spend the night out there. You break your leg or something because you're by yourself. This is how you have a shelter and everything else. Or let's just say you just get lost. You know, you got lost. You can't find your way. Don't panic and run off into the damn woods. Just stop, evaluate your circumstance. If it's dark, fine. You know, starting to get dark, set up camp. Don't get yourself in more trouble. Just use the gear that you brought with you. Think about your circumstance. Think about where you're at. And then figure your way out in the morning. You know, don't bother to run off and get yourself all screwed up, you know, in the dark or, or get yourself even more lost. So the point is, that's how you're going to set that up. And I hope that that clears up some of the confusion about the belt kit stuff. My belt kit does change depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing, but it always carries the same essentials, you know, of food and so on and so forth and, and, and minor, you know, all the fire stuff and everything like that. The only addition is, is that if I know I'm going somewhere where I potentially could be stuck, I move into a kit more like this so that I know I've got shelter and everything like that. You know, if I'm planning to come back that day, then this is what I bring. Um, if, I, if I know that I might end up overnight, then I bring the backpack. You know, and then most of that stuff is expanded in the backpack. So the gear escalates depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing. Anyway, I hope that helped with all the confusion uh, about the belt kit. Again, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. If you like what we're doing, like us on Facebook, watch our videos, like our videos, share our videos, and help us get some new camera equipment on Patreon. Thanks a lot.